Hello, hello everybody. This is Moni with Flowers by the Bunch. Today I'm going to make an arrangement in a thrifted container. This is actually a ceramic type container. It has some um, fruit on the side. It's really very lovely. Kind of a trough type container. I have added a block of fresh floral foam to my container and I have filled it with some water. Um, it will hold plenty of water. And so it's always very important that when you pick a container, it needs to be one that holds water. Um, it needs to be watertight, of course, because water's the most important resource to your flowers. So I'm looking to see if I can find the end of this tape. I am going to take this, this waterproof tape and I am just going to go right across the top of this foam just to make sure that it doesn't topple out. All right, so I have taped in my foam so it's going to stay in place and that's going to help keep the flowers from, from toppling out because they will. I'm going to take um, my hydrangea and I'm going to start out with hydrangea. So I'm going to take my hydrangea, remove the leaves from my hydrangea. I'm going to take my floral knife, cut that stem at an angle, and I'm going to dip it right in some quick dip. Count to about seven. I'm going to nestle that right into that foam. Take a second stem. Cut that stem at an angle. Dip it in quick dip. Now, if you don't have quick dip at home, that's completely okay. We use this just to help um, help extend the life of the flower. Um, if you don't have quick dip and you want to use something, you can certainly use alum, pickling alum. You can get it in the um, in the canning section at your local supermarket. Um, it's in a powder. You're going to have to wet that stem of the flower and just dip it right in that powder. It's going to help um, crisp the heads of your flowers. All right, so there's our hydrangeas tucked in. I'm gonna move him over just a smidge. All right, there's my hydrangeas tucked in kind of down the center of our container. Next, I'm gonna come in with a little bit of this eucalyptus. So I'm gonna use just a little bit of seeded eucalyptus and I am going to take it and I'm just gonna break it in small pieces and I'm just going to nestle it right there on the edge of my container. Now you can do this first. You can do it in the middle or you can do it last. It doesn't really matter. Um, it's really up to you as to how you choose to design. Um, I just thought that this would help cover those edges for me. I don't really want it to look as if the flowers are just sitting right on top of the container. I want it to kind of drip over the edge a little bit and that's what this eucalyptus is going to do. So you can see I'm just taking small little pieces and I'm pinching them off and just tucking them in my foam and I'm going all the way around in this container. You can even nestle some kind of between the hydrangeas. All right, so there's my greenery and I have more. So just in case I need more, we can certainly add it. There's our eucalyptus all the way around. I'm just gonna, that's the stem that I pinched it all off of. I'm gonna toss that. I'm gonna set this to the side. Next, we're gonna come in with some pretty lilies. So I have some beautiful oriental lilies. They're really kind of, they have a white with a little blush tint to them. I don't know if you can see that pretty color, but I'm um, really, really pretty. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to cut my stem apart. I'm not going to put it in as one full stem. I'm going to use my floral knife and cut the individual blooms off and just nestle that stem right down into that foam. I'm 
I'm going to take um, very carefully and I'm going to pull the pollen out. Just pull that out. If you don't and that they open up, it's going to stain the, the lily. So you can see I'm just going to tuck that bud right down in as an individual flower. It works out really nice when you, you are able to take a flower apart. So this is one full stem. I'm just going to pull those individual, the blooms and the buds off and use them as individual flowers. And then they go much, much further in your arrangement. See how I tucked it over there on the side? And I'm just using my floral knife and cutting that stem at an angle. I might leave this one, these two together. All right, so there's our lilies all the way through that arrangement. Okay, next I wanted to show you this rice flower. So we received this in yesterday and it is so pretty now it reminds you it reminds me a lot of yarrow um except this is of course um pink in color um they say it's real fragrant and it hasn't really opened up but the wonderful part about rice flour is it dries beautifully so it dries just like it looks here um, and so it's a wonderful dried material also so if you have some left over that you haven't sold, you can certainly just drop these in a vase and just let them dry out. You can take some home and um, and let it dry. Put it in a couple of little um, vases that you have here and there. Um, I love anything that you can get that can also be used as a dried material because then for sure it's um, shelf life is is extended greatly. Um, there's another type of um, flower that we like to get here that's called straw flower. And straw flower is just the same. It dries just as pretty as it is um, fresh. So it's really fun. So I'm just taking it and I am just cutting it at an angle and nestling it right down into that arrangement. And y'all, it is so pretty and so fun to work with. Now it comes in multiple colors. It doesn't just come in this pink. It comes in whites and yellows, um, but it's so, so pretty. I just love it. Okay, so there's our rice flower tucked in. Next, we're gonna come in with some really pretty pink Mondial roses. So Mondial is a variety that we re I really like it. Um, at Valentine's Day, it's a very hearty. It comes in a white, and it also comes in this in this very blush pink. Now, the reason I like it is it's a hearty, hearty rose. It never comes in here blown usually, and it's a very firm rose. It has lots of petals, so it's got a large petal count. And once it opens, it opens almost like a garden rose. So it's just a beautiful rose to use. What I'm going to do is go ahead and remove any of those um, guard petals. So often um, you will get a rose in and some of these petals will have bumps and bruises. Well, they're called guard petals and they're guard petals for a reason, to help protect the inside of the flower. And so sometimes you will find certain roses that have um, like greens and different shades on the outside on those guard petals. Um, and so the guard petal is exactly that. It guards that rose and keeps it from being damaged. But sometimes it's fun just to leave those guards on because they're as pretty as the rose itself. <laughs> but I'm gonna go ahead and pull off any of the bumped or bruised petals. I'm gonna take my knife Cut that stem at an angle, and I am just tucking that pretty rose right down into that floral foam. Mm -hmm. 
Now often you will see me wire roses with these. I'm, I, they're going to be cut short enough that they're going to have plenty of um, room to drink that water. So I'm not wiring these, but you absolutely can wire your roses. But you see how, how low they're nestled down in. This one for some reason is not doing what I want him to. They're so pretty. Oh, that rice flower makes me happy. <laughs> All right, so there's our roses. So sweet little pink Mondial roses tucked in. Okay, so the next thing we're going to use, we got in lots of fun stuff this week. So the next thing we're going to use is a flower called Veronica. Now Veronica is almost, I don't even know how to tell you what it looks like. There are times when all the flowers are opened up, it almost looks like, looks like a little fox's tail. It kind of, um, it has more blooms up here and then it kind of comes to a point. But it's just a pretty little, um, almost a little lime flower, but just kind of fun. It gives us a little whimsy to our arrangement. Now it comes in several colors. It comes in this white, it comes in shades of pink, and it comes in purples. Um, Veronica is a, um, a beautiful blooming flower that you can actually plant in your, um, in your own yard um, and it's long lasting. It's a very um, hardy and it's a perennial so you would have to plant it every year but it's, um, it's just a fun flower to plant and it's a fun flower to have in the flower shop. It just gives a really pretty texture to your arrangement and it's just really fun to look at. <laughs> I chose this white because I wanted it to be soft for the, the pinks and whites. I had picked out a pink, but the pink was a little more lavender than I preferred, so I chose the white instead. Now you'll look at some of these flowers and you'll see these are the little buds on the side, which are so fun. And I just leave those on there. It gives us a little more whimsy, a little more texture. but so pretty. Okay, the next thing we got in are these Hypericum berries. So we actually got a mixed box. So we order our flowers from a grower and we get them from a company called Budsy. And Budsy offers, of course, solid boxes. So when we ordered our lilies, we got all lilies, but multicolors. When we ordered our hydrangeas, we got all hydrangeas. But with these berries, we got a mixed box. And it included, I believe it included berries. It included um, Bells of Ireland and it included Larkspur. Um, but it's fun to kind of get a mixture. And then you don't have 150 stems of berries that you have to sell. You only have about 40, so that's nice. So I'm going to take this berry. It's called a Hypericum. I'm going to strip that foliage, and I'm going to cut that stem at an angle, and I'm just going to nestle it in somewhere. So there's an empty spot right here on this edge, so I'm going to nestle that right in. Now with Hypericum berries, often you will have to remove the foliage because sometimes the foliage doesn't always look so pretty. Go ahead and just slip that right off of that berry. It's not going to hurt a thing. So like this is a little dried, just go ahead and pinch those, um, that foliage off. It's not going to hurt a thing. Now these berries paint really well too. So if you ever need another color, you can certainly use um, paint to paint these. Um, there have been times when we needed maroon. So we have taken our berries and we've just painted them with maroon paint. You can, with the berries, use paint that you bought at your local hardware store, or you can certainly use flower paint. We often use flower paint, but with berries and foliage, you can use um, hardware store paint. Hypericum berries do come in lots of colors. They come in pinks and they come in greens. They come in burgundy and red, um, white, lots of pretty colors, but I love the texture. Okay, next we're going to come in with something called green dragon. So if you look at the green dragon really closely, 
Um, it's also called Penny Crisp. It almost looks like it's got tiny little coins um, going up those little floor. It's almost like a little, I don't even know what to tell you. <laughs> but they they look like tiny little coins okay so now let me do I will say the only thing about um, green dragon is it is very wilt prone so when using it it needs to go directly in tons of water because it is going to wilt so you can't use it for like a bouquet you can't use it in corsages and boutonnieres which makes me sad because it's so pretty it's some of my favorite um, but it does have to have water or it will wilt and so often, even if you use it directly in water, sometimes it wilts. So that's the only reason I don't use it as often as I would love to, is because it's just not as hardy as I would prefer. Now here at our shop, it's always important that we choose hardy, hardy things because we want to make sure that it's going to last. Um, So we try to use the most hardy materials we possibly can. And that's one reason I love the idea of the rice flour because everything else in the arrangement can die and the rice flour is always gonna be there. So that's fantastic. Okay, and then the last thing that we got that we don't get very often, and we also, we got the, um, the Green Dragon and the Caspia in the same box. Um, I want to say it also came with some um, Billy Balls. So we got lots of fun stuff this week. So Caspia is a type of um, filler flower. Don't, I don't use it very often because it's not got the nicest fragrance. Um, Caspia, I don't even know what to tell you it smells like, but it doesn't smell lovely. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about it. Um, if when you get it in, it has a, um, it just, it just smells bad. If you will take it and put it in fresh water, no flour food, and add some dish detergent, like a liquid dishwashing soap, like Dawn dishwashing soap, to the water, it will remove the smelly fragrance. So, that's just a little tip for you, because you'll find that Caspia stinks. Um, and I'm not even sure why in the world they would have chosen Caspia, except it's lovely. Why they would have chosen Caspia as a cut flower, strictly because it doesn't smell good. It's kind of like baby's breath. Um, just, Jip does not smell pretty. Um, and Caspia neither. Um, but with Caspia, the one thing about it is you can add liquid dishwashing soap like Dawn to your water and it'll take that smell away. So there's your tip for the day. I'm gonna take this Caspia, I'm gonna cut it at an angle and I am just going to tuck it kind of here and there. Now the thing that's really nice about Caspia, it's kind of feathery. So it's just another texture thing. The more texture to me, the prettier the arrangement. So you can see I'm just kind of taking small pieces off the stem, cutting it at an angle, and nestling that right in to my foam. All right, so there is our low compact arrangement in a trough style container. I used one block of fresh floral foam. I used three stems of white hydrangeas. I used, what else, what was next? I used about a stem and a half of the seeded eucalyptus. On the roses, I used four stems of pink mondial roses. I used two stems of the pink um, oriental lilies. I used three stems of the green hypericum berries. And I used four stems of the um, white Veronica. And I used four stems of the um, rice flour. I used a little less than one stem of the Caspia and less than one stem of the Green Dragon. 
so it is a beautiful arrangement. I love this style. Um, it just makes me happy. Guys, thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions about how we do things here at our shop, don't hesitate to ask. We would love to answer your questions. Every once in a while, we actually got a question today that was a little more than we could explain on the on then we could answer in text under the video so if ever you have a question you can certainly call us here at the shop too don't hesitate we are happy to talk to you um, and answer any questions you might have guys i hope you have a wonderful afternoon and we will see you all real soon thanks so much